allow the energy and the information of today to just softly sink in and know that it will unfold like a beautiful soft spiral as your day, your evening, your weekend progresses. And right now, right here, you can feel the love that Spirit has for you because you are here today. You took this time from your life to be in this room with the entourage of Cryon, with the family that's here, and with the love that is here. Each one of you knows love in a different way. And when you bring that here to this room, to this gathering, all of the aspects of love are present for you, for each one of us. Take another breath. And know that in that beautiful soup of love, everything about love is here for you. Everything you are, everything you bring, and everything love can give you. And if you'd like, just bring your hand to your heart center and touch your heart and say a nice, soft, internal thank you. Thank you to this beautiful friend in your chest that goes everywhere with you and reminds you of the blessing of love, of human love, of the beauty of what you deserve as an honored and loved human. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are so many messages that we have given over the years. And each time it begins, and each time my partner sits in the chair, he's unaware of what's coming. But he's often presented with emotions. And the emotions come from that which is the other side of the veil and often corresponds with the kind of message that is going to be given. And if it's going to be scientific, there will be a certain kind of emotion. If it's going to be informational, a certain kind of an emotion. But when it's going to be about the love from the other side of the veil to you, he knows it. And that's what this is. We go from channelings which are filled with revelation, history, beauty, to ones that are simply loving, with no agenda of teaching. This is an exposition of who you are. And to do this correctly, I want to tell you this. Again and again, I said this. You need to hear it now, again. Those of you in the chairs need to hear it. I know who's here. Spirit knows who's here. The creative source who made you knows who's here. You do not live in some kind of vacuum. And yet it feels that way, does it not? It feels like you are surrounded by yourself and that's it. And we've said it over and over. This is the situation that you create as a human being. The circumstances of being linear. That it's just you, one body. And as you walk around, it's just you. 
But that is not the case at all. The soul that you have, that you call many things, the higher self, that which is grander, the innate, goes way beyond that which walks around in biology. There's pieces and parts of you that are connected to every single other human on earth. There are pieces and parts of you that are connected to the other side of the veil. You belong to what is called the soup of God, a group, not just of entities, a group that is the fiber of all things. The peace of God that is in you, the section of God that is in you, is connected to all things. And that hides so completely from you. It hides so much that those of you in sorrow and depression, frustration, will go into the corner by yourself, never understanding that there are so many with you, never understanding the connection you have to the other side of the veil. It's always there. The energy of consciousness on this planet literally has dictated the closet you're in. The teaching that you've had even since birth has dictated who you think you are. And who you are is so much bigger. That's been our message for so many years. And getting you to realize it is what the channelings are all about. And so we do it yet again, in a different way. But all of the things that we do are slowly graduating into clearer and clearer metaphors. I'm going to give you another one tonight. So profound this could be for you, if you let it, if you let it. It's more than a story, much more. And every single piece of it means something else. And that is the way teaching works. You peel the onion of revelation of what is being said in my partner's language into something that becomes what is felt and actionable with you. Actionable is a term we use which means applying to the reality of your life. Something that is actionable for you is more than you listening. It is you becoming. As I tell this story about a human who has a vision. Visions are interesting. And you would define vision differently from person to person. But let's define it for this story. The human being who steps out of three-dimensional reality for just a few moments and sees things not in his or her world. A vision, a presentation of a grand truth with things that hide things that are revealed, and things that you can revisit later in your memory. Some of the prophets who walked this planet that were the most profound had visions, even before they began, of who they would be, what would happen to them. This is a vision of one human, a human who has no name, a human who stands in front of a door, in this vision and it's an enormous door and on the title on the door the title of the door on a sign it says the library of self a funny term to have a library of self but the human who opens this door knows that inside there will be 
a great deal to learn. A library would indicate volume after volume of information. Of self would indicate to the individual that it might be personal. If the self was of the human who opens the door. The human doesn't open the door. The human calls for a guide to open the door. Now this is because in this vision it is necessary to have an outside source reveal for the vision. And so in comes a nameless guide with an enormous key ring. <laughs> This particular guide will then accompany the human in this library because what the human is about to see will require more doors, more unlocking, more revelations, more metaphors, and a little mystery. The guide opens the door. Now here is a metaphor where the guide is not talking to the human yet. It's understood that the guide shows up with the key because the human wants to get in. The door is unlocked. And as it's opened, it's obvious it has not been opened for a very long time. Well, the door's hinges squeak with age. A dim light is there. But the light starts to increase as the human goes in. Without an apparent switch or torches or anything you might expect to create the light, the human arrives and the light is turned on. And immediately the human does not see a library with shelves or books, but a hallway with more doors. And the doors have names on them of things you would expect in a library, subjects to be discovered, to be examined. There is no necessarily order in this hallway. The human can start anywhere. But the human in question with this vision sees the labels and the first one is how things work. That is really interesting. You might have even labeled it physics or science or chemistry. It's how things work. He sees some of the other labels on the other doors. There's one called history, one called past. There's one called relationships. There's, there's subjects. And in every library he doesn't know what to expect behind each door could it be a, a giant room filled with books information the library of self he motivates immediately toward how things work looks at the guide the guide gets out the key now, they didn't exchange any words and there was no permission may I go in there was none of that there was, guide, would you please open the door? There was none of that. He simply looked at the door and the guide arrives with the key. The door is open and a vast room is revealed. How it works, literally, is all of the processes of the universe, all of the physics, all of the chemistry, even the multidimensionality of entanglement and beyond. Consciousness that becomes physics. Graduate planets. How it works. Thousands of books. Balconies of books. Ladders that would reach seemingly to the sky with a light. And he realizes, I'll never get through this. I'll never get through this. The reaction is interesting to the human who looks at it and says, it's overwhelming. I don't think I'll begin. And yet the things that are closest to him on the ground floor, 
seemed to be germane or that is to say relevant to his life how things work for him for her in this human and the human begins to read certain things and finds oh my goodness I never knew this that explains this wow think of the things in this room if I could only stay here in the vision there is an assumption of a time a time that is going to end in other words the clock is ticking for the vision and he can't stay very long and so the human knows that there is no time to study everything but the vision says it's all there the human wants to go to some of the other rooms if there's time I'll come back this one is absolutely fascinating it's all about how things work and some of these things explain what has happened to me how things work is not just physics and chemistry wow it's intertwined with my life on how things have happened physically for me in this lifetime what it is can you imagine such a library that touches on the core of what you've been through from your birth to now you overwhelmed with the fact that all was known and is in a book he leaves the library closes the door and it's locked now there is a symbolism here that says that the human is only allowed to look at one library at a time that symbolism is that the human is linear still linear in this vision still linear but as the humans begin the human begins to open the doors he realizes that even that is starting to change could it be that the human is changing even as the library is examined that's something to think about he peeks at another door which says history he's not really into a lot of history but he knows that beyond that door there are things that no one knows some things that have been mysteries forever he looks at the label on the door and the guide opens the door again he enters a light starts to come with him as he steps around and he starts to see another library segmented into areas civilizations that he's never heard of the ones he has heard of is one section the ones he's never heard of in other sections and there are section after section after section civilization after civilization names he doesn't know writing he doesn't recognize phenomenal the ones he does recognize he sees he recognizes the words of the civilizations that he knows about and he starts to read and he says I never learned that in school I didn't know that look at look at this they were here before these and those and wow this is an amazing thing things that go beyond anything that I've ever learned in school are right here right here again he's he's cognizant of the clock he realizes there are so many rooms there are huge libraries to see Oh, there are so many volumes, thousands, tens of thousands, describing civilization, history, how things work, how he's related to all of it. He exits this library and goes back into the hall and sees the next room is called the past. <laughs> What's the difference between history and the past? He's about to find out. He looks at the label on the door and it opens. The guide is there with the key. Different keys, different doors. The light follows him in because of his presence as a human. 
And then he sees it, not books, but crystals. And each crystal has its own story. And he realizes just from the training that he has had as an old soul, he has entered the library of the cave of creation. And in this is not history, unless you call his, her history. It's the history of the human. Each crystal represents a lifetime on the planet. Like some other metaphors we've given, other caves, he touches the crystal and immediately is given the story of himself in another time. She has another name, this human. He has another name, this human. There is another gender, one time a man, one time a woman. They're not lined up in any order. They're all the same size, and there are thousands. Overwhelmed he is, she is, with the profundity of what is there. It occurs to this human that they have been here forever, as long as Earth has allowed humans to be here. There's a crystal for every lifetime. We once gave you a metaphor, a puzzle. And it involved Jason and the cave. And in that, the human called Jason was so enamored with touching the crystals that he never got out. <laughs> he spent his life touching crystals to find out who he used to be. That's how attractive this is. But he, she, didn't spend that long because there were more. There were more things to show and tell. I'll come back here if I can. It's fascinating. Just a few crystals that were touched brought him, her, into a lifetime with all the facts and the people, the relationships were there. It's almost like the human was living it again. You've gone from books to crystals. You've gone from how it works on paper to touching a crystal and having other visions within a vision. The further you go, the more doors that are open, the more you become multidimensional outside of linearity. Out in the hallway, more doors, more labels. There was one that was attractive, and yet it wasn't. I'll just go there right now. A label on the door. Death. Do I go there or not? What does it mean? Is this vision someplace where I'm going to die? Behind the door is there an indication of how long I last. Doesn't have a very good name to a human being, does it? Death. He, she looks at the door. Nothing happens. Where's the guide with the key? I'm brave. I'll see what it does. I'll see what happens here. Where's the door? key where is the guide and then the human looks at the door closely and sees there is no doorknob <laughs> I want you to get this clear the room is fake you can't open it it doesn't exist the metaphor of the library and the room and the door there is no death Profound it is for you to see this, for the human to realize this in the vision. Death would mean that the soul does not exist. And it always does and always has and will forever. In the vision of metaphysical things and the truth, there is no death. There is no way to open the door. There is no way to unlock the door. It's something that doesn't exist. And if you could open it, it would be a brick wall. 
Are you getting this? More doors, more labels, more things to see. There's, a, there's one called relationships. What could be in there? You already had the crystals to talk about what you've ex lived and what you've expressed. and you, You've had indication of, of how things went for you. You've had your past lives. All of these things. Science. History. It had to encompass relationships. So what could be behind this door? It gets better as it goes, doesn't it? <laughs> Looks at the door and out comes the guide. And this time the guide speaks. And the guide says, be ready for this. And unlocks the door. The human walks in, and the light goes with him, her. And inside, there's a party going on. And it's a party with everyone that human has ever been involved in, in all the lifetimes on the planet. The ones they've loved and lost, the ones they still know, it's almost like every soul was there. And they look young and they look beautiful. Just like they, they met them the first time. If it's a mother or a father from any lifetime, it's when they were young and beautiful with you as a child. If it's a spouse, it's when you married them. If it's a sister or a brother, it's when you knew them as a child. And they're all there together. And the music is beautiful. And it's so emotional. Because it's real. You see, there was no death. <laughs> Are you getting this? There was no death. The room of relationships is a promise to you. Dear human being, a promise. A reality that you should know is in your library. There's a party outside. <laughs> One more door. It's an interesting door because this door becomes multidimensional and not necessarily understandable. And it's called future. The guide opens the door, the human goes in. The light is enormous, bigger than it ever has been when generated by the human in any other library. It's the biggest room of all. Enormous. But what makes it strange is it's totally and completely empty. <laughs> Do you get the idea? It's empty because it hasn't been created. There are those in this room and listening to this channel that believe the future, even of this life they have now, is going to be filled with the same kinds of problems and strife that they've had all their life. It's not an empty room. It doesn't have them creating anything. They don't have the ability to understand that tomorrow is a blank page. And that you do not have to carry the burdens of yesterday into tomorrow. But what you have today that makes you fearful, you can drop on the floor right now and walk into a light that is your creation for tomorrow, a new human that you are. The doors are shut. The light goes dim. The vision is over. Those of you who wish to analyze this will find stories within stories. Everything means something else. But let me tell you something that you probably have already gathered. 
the multidimensional human being that you are, in your own DNA, has this library existing. It is in you today. It is yours. And you don't need a vision to access it. This is the promise of the shift. The ones who seeded you finally were able to walk into this library themselves of their own to see who they were, what they could do, how everything works. The physics of consciousness, the benevolence of belief, the beauty of compassion. As they walked through a society that eventually had no more war, a society that could see the God within and the God without until it finally merged. This is possible with this planet and this civilization because of the shift that has just occurred a few years ago. You are on the infancy, in the infancy, of something enormously grand that will develop over lifetime after lifetime. That is what has happened on this planet. This library inside you exists. Some of you, if you wish, may open any door. You don't need a guide. Dear ones, the guide was necessary in the old energy. The keys are yours. If you want to know really what happened, as you enter what we call the 11th civilization on this planet, you want to know really what happened in that shift in 2012? The whole setup of the nodes and the nulls, the magnetics, all of that, gave you the keys to the library. It's here. It's inside you. It's magnificent. And it's discoverable in all of its pieces and parts. Which one are you going to go to first? Which one? You're all very different. You all have the issues that a human who is unique has. And each of you will decide, based upon this short little channel, which library room do you want to enter first? What do you need? And I will tell you, you've got a ring of keys for all the doors, except one. There is no death. The human body deteriorates and goes away. So does everything else. But you, the essence of you, is forever. You will have that room with you every single time you come here. It travels with you. The knowledge of everything is inside. Think about these words. Think about the vision. The library of self is in you now. It's not somewhere else. And you have the keys. I am crying in love with humanity. And so it is.